Okay, you know Chris Brennan. One of the coolest things I learned about from his podcasts, one of the things he said that I'm, I always think about is the guy, Vettius Valens. Did I say his name right? Um, Vettius Valens. The, that one yeah, of the, Vettius Valens. Yeah, he was an old astrologer in around like Alexandria, if I'm correct. Um, or sometime yeah. in, the, in those times. And uh, Chris- I think he traveled to Alexandria uh, at some point. Uh, I'm not okay. really sure if he was from Alexandria, but I think he traveled from somewhere to Alexandria, but I think he belongs to uh, Lebanon or some, okay. uh, some place. That's like probably that. right. He probably traveled to Alexandria. Yeah, because the story yeah. that he told was about how scientific the old Western astrologers were even, even though we like to think nowadays, they think, oh, they were just these superstitious, nutty people. You know, if you ask uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson or someone, but we had, you know, he explains this account where Vettius Valens was in a shipwreck in Alexandria or near there. So yeah. he was in a ship and it oh, wrecked yeah. and they all survived. And he got every person's birth data and compiled it all and correlated yeah. how the same transits that were causing an accident at sea were lining up for every single person on the boat mathematically down to precise points and it was like whoa exactly. this is like exactly how we try to do things now and he was doing sure, it that yeah. way back then you know yeah so the idea is like he he talks about uh, so many hellenistic astrologers in his book and he uh, the thing is like the the not every astrologer's story is precisely written because you know we should understand it's 2000 years before and so many texts don't survive but i think whatever he he, uh, he has written is probably most accurate about the astrologers and some astrologers have uh, have the stories that they have read and it's part of the book and uh, you know i really like the first 10 chapters 10 or 11 chapters of chris's book because uh, it it kind of elaborates the tradition like no one else. Yeah, so, yeah, it really does. Very important. Yeah. So, in terms of the uh, in terms of the uh, the styles, you are obviously kind of you like the more the Hellenistic kind of the more the old school uh, Western yeah. astrology. Would you say? Uh, no, I, I, I'm pretty much <laughs> equally interested in both Hellenistic and medieval traditions because uh, you know. Uh, uh, I, I basically read, uh, I have not said read, but I, I basically own six or seven books written by Dr. Ben Dykes. Uh, and Ben Dykes has translated about uh, like 21 to 22 books from various languages such as Greek, I'm not sure Greek, but Latin and, and Arabic. Uh, and he has, he has explored and translated materials from, uh, you know, f- from the first uh, 1500 years he has translated the entire work of Guido Bonatti and wow. uh, he has translated Abu Mashar and uh, wow. Abu Mashar's uh, you know re- solar revolutions and yeah. he has translated uh, Dorothes of Sidon who was a very influential first century Hellenistic astrologer who turned out to be extremely important and significant in the works of uh, 7th or 8th century Persian astrologers so I'm uh, I'm I'm equally interested in medieval astrology. And if you ask me at this point of time, I'm completely immersed into the works of Abu Mashar's solar revolutions and primary very directions cool. and very, all very those cool. things. Uh, and Fridaria, let's not forget Fridaria. I'm currently uh, finishing my book on Fridaria and uh, almost finishing on Fridaria. So th- these are, you know, these are, uh, uh, you know, you, you cannot substitute all these techniques. And if you read Abu Mashar's book, Abu Mashar is probably uh, is, is a gift of uh, what we have today. Because to be able to read the texts written by Abu Mashar, I think one needs to be extremely fortunate because those texts were uh, somewhere lost and Ben Dykes had this courage to kind of find out from somewhere and he translated from uh, Arabic. And the, the book is, if you want, I can just show the book. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, I'm not sure if it will be legible because yeah. of the virtual background. But, yeah. uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. It's, it's kind getting... of even cooler now. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's an etheric so, you know, book. <laughs> this book is holy. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so the, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But, but you know, the, the book is like 
eight seven hundred to eight hundred pages long, and and it's it's on solar revolutions. Okay. Wow. And yeah. how to use uh, how to use perfections, distributions, and Firdaria along with solar revolutions with a little bit of Navamshas. That might be a surprise to some of those following your channel, but Abu Mashar had used the Navamshas. Uh, and he had given uh, yeah. some of those ideas of how to use Navamshas as an alternate indicator of the year. So, you know, uh, it's it, uh, it's extremely important for me today, uh, like to to have this uh, exposure yeah. to Ben Dykes or Chris Brennan or all those people. Uh, with by keeping my foundation intact so i don't forget uh, uh, brihat prashara hora shastra mm-hmm. or uh, saravali or alatipika or whatever it may be uh, yeah i mean that's where i come you, from yeah i think that it's good when you're first starting to just stick on one system to learn it good before when you're just getting your abc's down to just do whatever it is you're interested in first but then when you get solid in that it can be very good to go and fill in the gaps with other techniques from other systems and um that's kind of what i would have recently been doing with the outer planets because i was really fascinated by this book um cosmos and psyche by richard tarnas and i i know you've heard of him and all and that yeah. deals with the outer planets and these generational influences and uh for example his chapter on saturn and pluto conjunction which we had last january right when the pandemic started his book that he wrote yeah. in 2006 talked about how this is like a every time it happens is a major time of contraction and isolation and this heavy gravity in the society and the air of the atmosphere of the world is just heavy and intense and the the black death happened in a previous saturn conjunction you know saturn pluto and uh, the start of communism and the cold war and you know all these other things that were very difficult um and so yeah, like Vedic astrology just didn't have the outer planets and they didn't have that. So you got to go to other systems to kind of like, and I know that there are some references to outer planets and some some subtle references, but- You know, let's, yeah. by sticking to astrology, there is no outer planets in Jyotish. So yeah, in traditional uh, Jyotish. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you know, many Jyotishis like myself have gone and messed and experimented around with that and seen if that was helpful and actually found it to be very helpful to bring in. Um, and, you know, this brings me to another point that I think for a lot of the, maybe the beginner astrologers watching this, it's, it's really easy when you first learn, you learn, oh, if you're going to be Hindu astrology, you have to do sidereal. And if you're going to do Western, you have to do tropical, but actually it's not so much about the calculations you use, but the style of yeah. techniques that you're working with. And so here's someone who is using a lot of Hellenistic and tropical Western techniques, but using sidereal zodiac. Yeah. And I'm someone who's yeah. doing Indian techniques and I'm using tropical zodiac. <laughs> um, sure. Yeah. Uh, I think that's Indra the has not struck me right? down with lightning yet. He has not, he has not taken me out. He's <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you know, uh, that's basically uh, the beauty of astrology because I think astrology is just far beyond all these cosmological differences that people are getting into, uh, f- uh, you know, ugly debates. With. Yeah. So when you're first learning, then, okay, you can tell when someone's kind of insecure with what they know, so they have to defend their little thing. And I don't feel that way with you. And I like that with all the really good astrologers, like, you know, Chris, or uh, someone who's just established in what they do, you're, you're not going to be afraid to go and look at something else because you're confident in what you've done working and you're like, you probably have something else that works too. I want to see what you're making work. Yeah, sure. But see, it's, I, think, I think it's very uh, important for us to remain open uh, to kind of observe or inculcate some things from other traditions as well because, uh, uh, you know, see... Uh, it's it's very difficult to kind of uh, uh, digest when you know that you don't know so much. But the moment you start reading all those things, and uh, when you start reading all those things, it becomes entirely different, and you don't feel that uh, insecurity or immaturity yeah. so far. But if you see so much of uh, astrologers who are 
kind of well versed in various traditions of astrology would never get into a fight with which is superior and which is inferior so it's because they know both the traditions only those people who do not have exposure to other traditions yeah. will kind of be talking in a very condescending manner yeah. so uh, i know for a fact that uh, i know for a fact that i have a lot of value in persian tradition and uh, hellenistic tradition because uh, i think it has groomed my astrology in a way that it it was not Uh, it was it, it was never done before so uh, you know uh, with with jyotish it's you always feel like it's good to have a teacher but it but when it comes to hellenistic or persian astrology things are so laid out and it's it's not so easy to understand let me let me tell you it's it's very uh, there are uh, difficult things and i've been reading uh, ben dykes abu mashar for almost one and a half years since its release last august mm-hmm. uh, so you know but but the thing is like the 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 moment you kind of get into it and when you understand a specific phrase that's written it's done you just have to keep practicing it yeah. but when it comes to jyotish it's when you start using <laughs> divisional divisional charts you, i have no idea why a sastyamsa is used or how a sastyamsa uh, you know the the mathematics behind why uh a d24 is constructed or why yeah uh, d- and i mean if it weren't for like it yeah if it weren't for um ernst my teacher i would have no <laughs> idea he i think fucking he just <laughs> he just he just somehow figured out a lot of these things and they really did work but yeah with vedic astrology like prashra he's just like here's the d60 here's this here's that he doesn't tell you what to do with it you know what i mean and he barely even tells you how to calculate it And so it's, yeah. it's it's it is a lot easier I think for students to jump in with Hellenistic or um learning the basic principles of horary astrology you can do so much work and do so answer questions um yeah it is a very simpler and clearer um practice and I think it is just about practicing it um a lot of yeah. time, right and and in the the it's funny because i do the prajna but i use the tajika or the basically the western um hellenistic the same uh the tajika tradition in india is the same as the alexandrian prajna basically and then there's no and there's south uh, indian though south indian prajna is so complicated and just insane like if you get prajna marga that book is just crazy it's like flip these seashells and do that and you know it's just like all kinds of crazy things but uh like um tajika nilakanta is basically like the same uh, ta- principle ta- that william lily used you know what i'm talking about no tajika is a uh, solar revolutions uh it's no, uh, no, no. It's they so- have that too that's Var- that's varshafall but t- tajika um also has yeah okay you know i i know what you're talking about yeah, so Oh, okay Prash- yeah i know this yes prashna yeah. tantra it's it's written by uh, neelakantha yeah. and even mm-hmm. before it's samarasimha yeah and yeah. so it's the exact same as like william lilly or you know applying and stuff yeah yeah sure sure and- yes you know uh, prashna marga is an entirely uh, uh, it's an entirely new i mean it's a very valuable addition uh, when it comes to posing questions of horary astrology in the indian context and again when it comes to horary there are a little bit of differences as to uh, what lily would do and what uh, neelakantha or uh, you know his successors mm-hmm. would do but again the fundamental idea is like uh, it's pretty much the same yeah. so mm-hmm. uh, uh, i'm not sure how i would uh, call out an example but horary is really it's pretty much similar because uh, i've read lily once uh, when i was you know uh very interested in horary astrology and lily's examples uh of horary astrology is really uh it it kind of drives you into horary astrology and once it does it's re- very difficult to kind of come yeah. out of it so and 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 it's fascinating because when i was reading about him william lily just he um he he had a he, he inherited a lot of money and got a huge library and so he taught him he was self taught um but the exact orbs of degrees that he suggested are identical to what the 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 um, Prashna, yeah. people were doing so he very likely 
had Indian books or, you know what I mean? That the whole idea that like these cultures were so isolated and separate is not really true when you learn history because it's, it's, it's not true. It's just not true. And, um, you know, like the idea that diamonds were only found in India until the 18th century. So every diamond that ever existed in Europe came from India until India. just the like <sighs> until they found them in Africa in like 1850s or something. So, sure. you know what I mean? Things like that. Or the idea of uh, if you go into the history and you, you know, um, uh, like the Silk Road, you know, there were like Chinese scholars who drew, who who went through India and, and all the way to Persia and back, and they spread and shared everything, you know, and and you know, it it it, it goes back far beyond, uh, you know, um, even before two thousand years. Like uh, the sea route was laid between uh, in India, Indian western shores of India, and Greece by fourth century BC. Yeah. Uh, because the the Greek people wanted spices and India was extremely rich in spices and Indians became super rich by selling those spices in return for gold and other precious uh, yeah. stones or metals. So yeah. uh, th that's how trade was, you know, the trade route was established and we never know whether it was only trade or there was knowledge exchange as well because be. I'm probably sure that there was knowledge exchange. There so that's why, yeah. So th that's pretty much why I wanted to say that the ancient and medieval worlds were far more connected than we can imagine. So all right. So, so you've heard of this book, Cosmos and Psyche, and uh, are there any hmm. other really cool books that you think people should check out for Western astrology? If you know any any kind of like area you want to recommend. <clears throat> Since you've really studied a lot of this, um, the, I'm not sure uh, if I've studied a lot, but uh, I think I've uh, explored a little bit of uh, traditional Western astrology, at least in terms of who has done what. So, um, see, uh, I think the first source to kind of get motivated and pumped up about uh, traditional astrology is Chris Brennan's uh, podcast. So, nice that's book. one thing. And there is there is another, yeah. So there is another YouTube channel that's run by Luis Ribeiro and uh, uh, Helena Evlar, uh, and they do a series of interviews with academic scholars who are researching in astrology uh, in their channel, which is called as the Astra Project. Uh, and I, I just feel like it's extremely uh, important, and we should kind of recognize it with some value and viewership because uh, not many people kind of know that academia and people in academia kind of take up history of astrology and some areas of astrology as a potential research work and people are doing PhDs. So uh, it's important for us to kind of have that kind of uh, uh, appreciation to those people who are trying to take astrology to, to the next level. What better yeah. Uh, what's better than anything if uh, if we are able to see astrology in academia in another 15 or 20 years down the line? So that's, that's right, one of the... Like, yeah, the co yeah. Sorry, the Cosmos Insight. That's why I was so impressed by um, Richard Tarnas. And Cosmos. Like yeah, Harvard graduate. exactly. Yeah. The, the great thing about uh, Cosmos and Psyche is because the book has always had mixed reviews, but I've liked the book and I've also done uh, almost a two-hour interview with Greg Crawford. And the the... The thing about Cosmos and Psyche is that it's not a regular astrology book. Let's let's get it clear. No. It's it's about uh, it's it's almost defending astrology. Uh, uh, it's 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 a uh, it's an attempt where an academician defends astrology. Uh, and, yeah, he doesn't uh, even mention astrology until like the fortieth page. He's so careful. He doesn't yeah. want to scare you away because he knows. Yeah. He's not, but it, it has, uh, at least I've heard that it has, has turned a lot of academic people over to accepting astrology. Um, yeah, I, I hope uh, I hope that's the case because, uh, I, and one more thing about that book is like, it kind of pushed me to check out some of the outer planet stuff. Yeah. Uh, and since then I started, uh, I started, interacting with evolutionary astrologers who use Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto mm -hmm. uh, in a whole another level to yeah. see how they're, uh, to see what their perspective is in terms of 
working with the outer planets so it's all fascinating but if you ask me uh some of the coolest books i am i'm more uh exposed to traditional astrology so yeah. i basically recommend all the books written by dr benjamin dykes mm -hmm. uh that's basically what about, what uh, john, john frawley a lot of people talk about john frawley yeah uh, i i've not read john frawley's book because uh, uh i i chose to read william lilly's book uh, uh because that's you know that comes from a tradition but i know i've had a few interactions with john frawley and john frawley is a genius of an astrologer so uh but i might not be able to comment on his book uh, i'm sure it's good there is no doubt john frawley is mm -hmm. uh no doubt it's it's he, he's he's a great astrologer and uh, so many people i've heard uh, i'm a i'm a group of a very uh, I, i mean uh, sorry i'm a part of a very small facebook group that kind of promotes john frawley's uh work uh or talks about john frawley's work and some of the students are actually uh, i mean oh, i think one person was a student of john frawley's work and she speaks very highly of john frawley so john frawley is surely one of those people but uh i think uh in terms of books i would i would suggest uh, uh ben dykes's book chris brennan's book and demetra george's book on ancient astrology mm -hmm. uh, i've not read demetra george's book on ancient astrology but uh i know that it is a uh, it is basically uh, a carry forward of what uh, chris brennan has left uh, in his book because chris brennan i mean obviously chris brennan's book is tightly packed and there is mm -hmm. there is no question about it but there is only so much a person can do uh, uh, in a book and it's it's already a 750 plus page book so uh, he had to cut short some of the techniques that he had worked with and uh, he concentrated a lot on history and philosophy uh, but make no mistake he dealt with annual perfections and zodiacal releasing in length which are the two uh, very prominent uh, time lord techniques of the hellenistic tradition mm -hmm. uh, and uh, demetra george's book is something that i have not read and i hope to kind of read at some point in the near future but before that i was uh, i was uh, fascinated by Ben Dykes's works, and since then I've not turned back, and you yeah. know that's how it goes. I know. So. I, I like the. Uh, I guess the the only parts of the Western traditions that I'm not as into are some of the more newer ones that they're kind of like a little more new age or so. There's some traditions that are a little yeah. More, <clears throat> they're kind of more If like you, not sticking to the fundamentals. Like I really like that Western had like a body of fundamentals, and yeah, like this is how you do a prajna and all that. And and that is it is a lot more clearly laid out there, and I do really like that. But so, is there any other um, Western astrologers that you haven't mentioned so far that people might want to hear about, or who are just noteworthy? Uh, see, uh, I have to say that uh, I, I see uh, maybe these people have not written books, but these people that I'm mentioning are are those people with whom I've closely closely worked with or. Uh, whose work i've read uh, in mm -hmm. in in the form of papers or articles mm -hmm. uh i think uh sharon knight is uh is uh, is, is a very hardcore traditional astrologer and uh, she she has a way with how she works uh, she is extremely systematic and she uh, she's she, she's she, she's one of the most intelligent astrologers that that you can find with extremely sharp presence of mind so its presence of mind is extremely important in astrology so uh, I, i like sharon's work and uh, i kind of like her writing and how she portrays i've attended her uh, a lecture or two and they are one of the most coolest lectures that i've ever attended and uh, another uh, steven birchfield is an encyclopedia of traditional yeah. western astrology so i've i've i hope he doesn't mind me saying this i have i call him an astro cyclopedia because you ask him any technique or any reference he tells you with page number he doesn't forget things he wow. he has he's so well read wow. yeah. and he's extremely knowledgeable about the traditions and let's you know it's, uh, you, you know if you have a conversation with him you know you'll be blown away so that's how his work is extremely wonderful and tanya daniels uh, is one of my closest friends and uh, 
she she she's a brilliant horror astrologer there is no doubt about it she has written various uh, horror articles on her website uh, uh, you know she has written a series of horror articles uh, on website and horror her horror i have had direct experience with her horror astrology uh, make no mistake she's Very she's cool. probably one of the best that yeah. you get and lars and rob kortnik uh, you know yeah. i don't need to talk about so yeah. lars manaro is Lars is one of those uh, very rare breed of astrologers who is proficient in jyotish persian and hellenistic uh, and it's it's very difficult to kind of find that kind of astrologers and rok is also the same way uh, rok is a bit leaned more towards jyotish and hellenistic than persian mm-hmm. but uh, i have see i've worked closely with rok kornik and i have done blind chart readings with him and his his way of doing astrology and his research into divisional charts mm-hmm. he has done a fantastic research in divisional charts mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's uh, it's something that not many people might like uh, especially if you come from india but uh, you know uh, it's it's a very critical idea and i think he has taken the usage of divisional charts to a more realistic level uh and these are these are some of the people that i really uh, like so uh, because just not just because uh not, not because they've written a best seller book or something but it's because i worked closely with them right and, well yeah i mean yeah. i just i know that i am an underground kind of astrologer that doesn't have a book out and you know there's a lot of us that are just kind of busy being in the trenches doing readings all day yeah. and don't have time to go and you know make these books or or do any of that other stuff um and yeah rock rock is great um so yeah those those are those are i would agree with all that everything you said there basically so i appreciate you sharing all this info and now we have a lot more kind of like ways a lot more a lot more avenues to research for you know all these types yeah. of astrology um yeah is there anything you want to like add to close with for for maybe other indians who are curious about western astrology i i just wish uh uh indian astrologers are a bit more open in terms of being inclusive and receptive about other traditions of astrology i can understand the reason why it's not so but still i think it's time to kind of open up and look at other traditions of astrology because we are missing some marvels that are lying uh you know outside uh india so india is not the end of the world so yeah you know that's probably one of those things that i want to say uh and uh, yeah that's basically it okay cool all right thanks um thanks for have thanks for being on here and what is your contact info for people who want to get in touch with you give us your you know your website and all that stuff <laughs> uh um, you know it's easy to contact me because my website is the abverdict.com Yeah. and my email id is the abverdict@gmail.com so uh it's you know if anyone wants to talk about anything i'm just happy and free to share things that i know i'll post that ben- ben- beneath here in the description of this video and everything for you guys sure cool thanks for having me it was a great pleasure talking and i'm just not so happy that this is ending yeah i mean i we could always talk so much <laughs> maybe another time we could um get more into showing techniques and oh know, sure yeah i'd be happy to do in the future person oh, wait, that i wanted to mention uh anthony lewis is a genius of an astrologer yeah. uh, he he is prolific uh he has written hundreds of articles for his blog and he has written around seven or eight books or probably even more in astrology and anthony I, i'm ever grateful to anthony lewis because uh Anthony Lewis has basically uh you know cleared so many voids that I had about various techniques uh in western astrology and uh, nothing of those would have been cleared unless and until I had spent 500 or 600 dollars to attend a yeah. uh, you know course or something so I think I'm ever grateful to Anthony Lewis uh, I just want to take this platform to kind of mention Uh, yeah, we, that, we we all three did a video to that once like a year ago um sure on, yeah into that uh on horary yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. so anthony is someone that i'm 
you know he has his he has my gratitude all my life so, yeah. i know there's so many of these older astrologers who've been doing this stuff for like 30 years but they're not on youtube and they're not tech savvy and they're not posting all day on instagram so you guys who are watching you need to keep that in mind just because someone's constantly promoting themselves and doing all these cool thumbnails in their videos doesn't mean that it's the best content you might want to find an older guy who <laughs> who doesn't have the fanciest stuff like that but he might know a lot more um sure. so that's what i found in my experience as well um all right cool well thanks for coming on we'll have you on again soon um yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me.